So parallel computing, different methods explained. Yeah. So maybe the first question, what does parallel in general mean? Like, you've been saying this a lot. Oh. Um, yeah. Yeah, like parallel I mean, this in this what... case means that, like in general, it it means that we're doing more than one thing at the same time, right? Like we're doing mm -hmm. some things uh, at the same time, so that we get so stuff done faster. Yeah. Right. So I guess that's like the whole point here. So you don't want to run it basically with the power of your computer, but you want to run it with the power of hundreds of your computers. And there's these different paradigms here. Well, first, if we look at our roadmap picture here, in this part of the course, we're looking at using multiple of these CPU nodes together. Yes. So we'll talk about like the different. Sorry, you were. Uh... Go ahead. Yeah. So, yeah. So we'll be looking at these di like different ways of working so that you can get uh, your code well going faster. And and uh, at this point, it's good to iterate that like doing something faster or more efficiently or something, it, it can be faster in the sense that you get all of your work done faster. So you get like a bigger mm -hmm. throughput. We are often talking about throughput, which means that mm -hmm. you get like, you get all of your stuff done faster. Uh, mm -hmm. And that, but but it doesn't mean that individual things are done faster. Uh, mm -hmm. So, but but it might mean that all of your things are done faster. And then there are the situations where your your piece of code runs faster, so you get it done in like instead of ten minutes, it takes five minutes, and that is faster in, in like time sense. But but there's also this idea of like you get all of your work done faster, and we'll be talking about this. Uh, in detail when it comes to these paradigms, but maybe you should explain yeah. all of these different ways of yeah. working. So before you explain them, what choices do people have? Like, do people choose which one to use for a code, or is it sort of already, if you if you know what code you need, it's sort of part of the code. So that's an excellent no choice there. Excellent point. Uh, so you have some choices. So for example, you can choose what code you use. <laughs> uh, the, yeah. you know often often some of these uh, ways of working for example this uh, embarrassingly parallel way of working it or data parallel uh, also known as data parallel it can be used with whatever code you use but in some okay. in many cases you are limited to what your program can actually do so mm -hmm. so different kinds of programs like like i mentioned the word salad like different mm -hmm. words mm -hmm work with different uh, paradigms so so mm -hmm. different programs work with different parallelization paradigms yeah. and if your code doesn't use those it it won't it cannot use uh use that uh, like that way of parallelization so you, you need to like pick up on these patterns that okay like this my code talks about this kind of stuff so it means that it uses this parallelization scheme right or idea yeah. Mm -hmm. and, and this okay. is what we are yeah, going to yeah. be talking uh, yeah. so for example you sit, your supervisor says you need to use this code to run stuff and you look at the code and it's MPI code and then well you're using MPI Yeah. and if you're writing your own code and deciding which to use that's another level that we're not really discussing today there's yes. plenty of other courses for that yeah if, if okay. you're writing your own code of course you can based on the problem that you're trying to solve, you can choose which method might work best. And maybe we'll go into that in some point, but yeah, yeah. not really. It's a full can of yeah. worms that we probably don't want to open. Yeah. So what are the, the main paradigms? So, so first is embarrassingly parallel, which yeah. you'd already mentioned a little bit. So yeah, well, so, let's look at the picture here. Yeah, the picture so is, what is does it? One. So if you scroll a bit down, you we can see both of the pictures. Oh uh, yes. Uh, yeah. So here okay. here's two diagrams that show like the first diagram basically shows how the code uh, would be situated in the cluster. And the second paradigm shows a bit more like this kind of an overview 
diagram of what mm -hmm. what's happening uh, in in like one one slurm uh, slurm uh, submission. So array jobs or these embarrassingly parallel jobs. These are this is basically that you're doing like two things at once, but with different uh, inputs. Like if you think about like you have like a, you need to do like like Richard said, Richard had to process multiple videos. So he, he has mm -hmm. one code mm -hmm. that processes videos and he has multiple video files that he needs to process. So what he can do is he can run uh, each of these yeah. video files and process them in individual jobs. <laughs> and and all of these jobs can be run at the same time in the cluster in completely like completely independent of each other. Uh, and and then they finish well independently. So they're completely independent and they run uh, in the, in their own like own own worlds. But they reuse most of the most of the code right. and most of the yeah. Uh, like yeah, yeah they reuse most. Yeah, of so the so the only difference in each of these jobs when I was running stuff would be each one gets a different input video file. Okay, I yes. think that explains it well. Yeah. So, so, so yeah, we'll talk about array jobs uh, in in the next section. But this is like this can be used with any kinds of code, and and so basically you run like multiple copies of the same thing. And there's a, this structure called array in Slurm that allows you to easily like parallelize whatever program you have, so that you run multiple copies of the same program uh, with multiple different parameters. Yeah. Okay, and that's the next lesson, if I remember right. So yes. what's next? Shared well, the next, memory. Yes, the next one is shared memory parallelism. And in this situation, uh, if you scroll yeah, a bit down, yeah. Uh, in this situation, we have, uh, we have one computer, uh, like one CPU node, uh, where we use multiple processors uh, at the same time. And the shared memory of the shared memory parallelization means that the different processes communicate with each other and, and they discuss uh, using the shared memory of the node for, for doing uh, stuff. So, so your laptop, for example, it's a shared memory parallelization. Like it's possible to run shared memory parallelization on your laptop. Because your laptop has like memory inside of it, this RAM that we were talking about yesterday, and it has CPUs, multiple CPUs. So if you're running, for example, like I don't know, like NumPy code or uh, R or MATLAB or, or whatever program on your computer, or even now when I'm running like Zoom, Zoom has multiple like these kind of threads running around, and it's it's doing multiple multi processing all the time to run. Uh, or, or let's say Firefox, if you start a browser, it starts multiple uh, different processes uh, at the same time. And all of them communicate uh, through the memory of the machine. And and in these situations, you need to reserve like one one of these, uh, these your job needs to reserve multiple processors yeah. for it. And all of these processors then uh, communicate with the, with the memory. And different programs or most programs or many modern programs utilize this and it's yeah. quite simple like, way of parallelization like for example last night the video encoding itself not the subtitling that uses multiple processors so i was using my desktop so it has eight processors and i'd run one job that distributes among all eight of them using shared memory and that speeds it up fairly well. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. basically, like, like uh, yeah. uh, if we return to the sorry for the hungry people out there, but for the <laughs> cooking analogy earlier, like let's say you you want to cook like a like a full meal on a, on a stove, you need to at one one burner you have a a, a pot full of uh, sauce that you're like you're making like a, your bolognese sauce or something like that. And on another pot, you're boiling the pasta. Like these are, mm. these are not independent because both are important for the meal. Like if you mm. do only one thing, 
they, and you they have to communicate pass. somewhat. Yeah, they have like, to communicate somewhat, but they do different. They, they might do different things, and and then you combine the things together. So this is kind of like idea of uh, what's yeah. happening here. So let's probably move forward. Okay. Move on to MPI parallelism. And yeah. what's the example here? Yeah, if you scroll a bit down. Yeah. So in MPI parallelism, so you might have word, heard this uh, letter as MPI. So it stands for message passing interface. And what it, what, it's this kind of technology that has been decided upon by, by like people, uh, scientists. So that they can run these like large scale computations. So if you think about the supercomputers running like some weather model or something like that, they're usually running MPI codes that enable you to communicate between multiple processors at the same time in, in like across uh, the boundary of the computer. So in the first diagram, we can see that there's like two, the reservation here is spread across two different nodes, but these are not independent. But instead, MPI programs usually work as this kind of like a collective. So they they communicate with each other and they are all running the same program, but they all are running their own part of that program. And then they communicate with uh, like usually neighboring tasks or other tasks so that they can like uh, have a have a discussion. OK, where where are we? And they usually run as this kind of like a collective. So let's say like a weather model might be splittable on like cubes or something like each, each, yeah, uh, like, each processor. Like the lamps. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Or yeah, let's use the weather model example. Yeah, so each processor so or each of these the weather... MPI tasks will run its own like own cube yeah. and run like, what's inside yeah. there. And... Yeah, like just to model the weather for the whole planet, the weather in Finland doesn't affect the weather in Australia. So they divide up the world into, let's say, several tens of kilometers squares. And then each square only has to communicate with the squares adjacent to it. And it can scale up very large that way. Yeah, maybe I would say that it actually affects, like this is like, if you know, like, if you have mm. like chaotic processes and that sort of things, like mm. to make it so that it affects, like, like let's say weather in Cuba affects the weather in Finland, like you need to have yeah. all of them running in the same model. Like you need to have all of the stuff in the same, uh, same like simulation space. And that thus all of the like workers need to run the same model at the same time. And, and this is yeah. kind of like a paradigm that if your code doesn't use MPI, it doesn't use MPI, right? Like you, you write programs mm -hmm. from the ground up using this paradigm usually. Like you don't like uh, decide to use MPI just for the kicks of it. Like while, if you already have <laughs> yeah. like a yeah. program, mm -hmm. you usually build the program uh, like using <laughs> MPI as this, this kind of like this base layer that, uh, that clues the whole thing together. Yeah. And I guess given the power of processors, MPI isn't as often used unless you want to scale to truly massive sizes of stuff these days. Yeah. Like, when's the last time a big MPI code was written? They are written all the time. I like, they, they are probably. written all the time. Yeah. But it's yeah. it's like nowadays they're talking about the exascale and that sort of thing, and it brings like mm -hmm. different kinds right. of problems. Yeah, like, if you think about, we, we, we'll hear, hear about the Lumi super, supercomputer, for example, today from the CSC yeah. people. And in those scales, you need to really think about how the communication happens because mm -hmm. you need, might have thousands yeah. of computers working together. But uh, let's move forward okay. to the. So, yeah. EDU. So moving on. Next is GPU. And this is actually someone asked the question, how about how are LLMs trained? And I guess that's this. So what's the GPU yeah. thing? So, so, yeah, so, so that's the, uh, like, yeah, I'll first answer the GPU and then I'll return to the LLM. Uh, so GPUs, oh, like yeah. GPUs are uh, or graphical processing units like the parallel execution is a, is a bit different than like the parallel in that we previously mentioned like previously the parallel execution was done by processors like cpus or central processor units but in gpus you have this one card which has 
this like massive amount of like small calculators inside of it called like C GPU cores or CUDA cores or or uh, uh, computing units or something like that. And and these can each execute their own piece of the program independently. Like they, they usually work like they all work with uh, like a different data or something like that. Sometimes they share data, but, but, but they usually run their own like program inside the GPU that is written specifically for the GPU. And, and the CPU part in these programs, it usually like sets up the whole thing. It, it, it reads input and output and that sort of thing. It, it's, it creates like the data that the GPU needs to have. It moves that data onto the GPU memory. Use uh, like the GPU has its own like memory, and then these uh, like thousands of like we previously in the past analogy we used the cheese grater analogy. Like basically, there's like a mm. million little holes in in the GPU, yeah. GPU or thousands of holes that each individually creates like a strand of cheese when you have a cheese grater, yeah. and and this is basically Put what happens on. that you have like yeah. these a lot of these. And when we're talking about the large language models. For example, these are so big that they don't fit into one GPU. So in those cases, you usually have like MPI plus GPU training. So you ha mm -hmm. can have some sort of communication. Or there's other frameworks like NCC. It's hybrid down here. No, uh, no. But, okay, yeah. uh, but basically, you can mix and match these different paradigms. But you really must be certain that your program uses these. Like uh, quite mm -hmm. often, for example, GPU, when you're doing stuff with GPUs, we'll talk about this later in a bit uh, in the GPU part, but you usually want to have also multiple CPUs because the GPUs are so fast that you really need to keep them occupied. So you usually need to have multiple CPUs doing work just to keep one GPU doing stuff. Mm -hmm. So so you can mix and match these different paradigms, but these are the main like different uh, like parallelization schemes. And you should be like you should check on your program which one it uses before you start doing. Mm -hmm. And also, so like, yeah, maybe we should quickly check on like oh. the does my code does paralyze? The code paralyze? Yeah, I like these yeah, figures so, you made here. Yeah. So, uh, yes. So, if you have a program that you you currently have and you want to parallelize it you need to think about like okay what how much benefit will i get from the parallelization and each program has some part in it that is serial so this is like a like a computing like fact it's not like a it's, it's like it's part of the like whole computing thing so all programs have some part that is that cannot be done in parallel and it, you should think about like okay how much benefit I get from parallelization if uh, if I do it. Like if I, for example, here in the first mm -hmm. diagram, we have a program with a really small part in the code that is done in parallel, That, but most of it's done in serial. So even if you uh, do the parallel part with two CPUs, you don't save a lot of time. But if you uh, have a program that has a, like a larger par uh, oh, parallel part, sorry. Uh, you might save a lot, a lot of time. So you should, like, throughout the whole thing, we'll talk about this. Uh, but you should keep this in, but in the back of your mind as well. But yeah. okay, like this is a Do massive we amount an exercise of exercise where we talk about yeah. this. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Yeah. So this has been massive amount of of words, and like, yeah, like don't worry about it. You don't have to yet understand all of the different paradigms we'll go through them mm -hmm. in order with actual examples yeah. that you can try out and how you ask slurm to give you these uh, resources mm -hmm. and i'd say yeah like one of the most annoying things is you get a new piece of software and it's like okay i want to run this on the cluster and it says this uses multiple cpus but you read the documentation and it really doesn't even tell you how it does parallelization it just assumes it has a computer and runs magically and yeah but um i guess not our problem yeah. or something to talk about later and again come and talk to us if you have questions
they'll try to do it yourself. Mm.